Radio's Food Carnival Trip to Ireland, Part 2. We're here in the town of Kenmare in County Kerry on the southwest coast of Ireland. The town of Kenmare is right on the ring of Kerry Road and is widely considered the most precious resort town on the whole island. Kenmare is really a tiny town, only consisting of two streets and not much more than a block long each. But it's home to so many traditional pubs upscale and high-end restaurants, and two five-star resorts. As you might guess, the food here is over the moon. The seafood jumps right out of the ocean onto your plate. The produce and meat travel about a mile to your kitchen, and the bread is baked daily by someone's grandmother. Needless to say, the butter and the cream, well, I don't know. I don't need to say anything else about that. It's no wonder I spent a lot of time here. So come along with me on this journey of sampling such incredible food, experiencing the local charm, and spending a little time with some of my chef and artist friends. Let's go. I want to start us off with a little inspiration for one of my dear friends and artist, Owen Cavanaugh. Owen's photography is well known in Ireland and around the world. He's a genius at capturing the incredible landscapes of Ireland's west coast. Next to food, my favorite part of Ireland is the scenery. Let's go poke inside his skyline gallery and see if he's around to talk. How do you capture it? I mean, we're going to show some different varieties of your work, but even just what's behind us. I mean, this is incredible. Were you born with this talent? Uh, <laughs> I'd say it's just something that evolved. Um, I always wanted to work outside and that's why I became a photographer. Um, I never wanted to work in an office and uh, I suppose the reason is why I do love it so much is because it's amazing to be in uh, like those wild places at a particular point and uh, taking pictures gives me a reason to be there. That's so cool and your eye just sees it, you know the angle. Well, Because no, I, I mean it's magic. I spend a lot of time looking for angles. I spend a lot more time uh, thinking about what pictures that I'm going to take uh, more than actually taking them. And yeah. I'll, I'll find a location, I'll find an angle, and uh, I'll decide what kind of weather I want, what I want this to happen. And then because I know the Irish weather, it's just a matter of time waiting for the weather to do oh. what I want it to do. And Wait. then I'll go back to where I knew I was going to be at that particular time. Right, and then how do you choose like seasons? Like sometimes you take the same location in different seasons. Yeah, well, I, I like to go back to the same place. The hardest thing to do is to find the locations, the like little special places. Okay. And then it's amazing when you go back at different seasons how that particular location changes. And even over the years, I'll go back to a particular tree and see how big it's got. That is so <laughs> cool. That so, yeah. is so cool. So there's a lot of energy and inspiration from the land itself that speaks to you. Yeah. I think that's great. Any of you familiar with the University of Notre Dame may also know the famous Morris Inn. Recently, they renovated, and they commissioned Owen to provide the art to adorn the walls and bring a little piece of Ireland to America. OK, 
Okay, so such a special treat. Once again, out in front of Hackey's, we are gonna go meet Martin, Chef Martin, and talk all about his food because we had a phenomenal meal last night and we shared some wonderful tasting experiences. So let's go talk to him about his process and his inspiration. Let's go. I almost feel like Mr. Rogers. Good thing I don't look like it, right? Chef Martin Hennessy embodies local Irish charm and flair, and his food is no different. He gathers ingredients that are so true to Ken Mayer. Last night, we ate some of the most fascinating chanterelles as a starter, a brilliant starter course, so delicious and so rare. His crab cakes are straight from the Kenmare Bay. He has Dover Sole, which is rarely available except seasonally. His crispy duck is everything you want in a crispy skin. And braised apples and some fresh herbs with a port wine reduction. It is craveable. Even his fish and chips for the kids, so cute and really delicious. But his baby lamb chops straight from the hills of Ireland are paired with some minted lentils and they are cooked to perfection. The sea scallops from the Kenmare Bay are breaded and pounded in a citrus garlicky butter sauce Decorated with a little fennel and a lemon wedge, you are swimming in that sea. And the sides, plentiful bowls full of Irish vegetables and potatoes. It's, it embodies what you envision Ireland to be about, and it's communal. So you feel like your friends and family are with you and sharing your meal with you. It's a true experience but let's not stop short of his desserts. Gorgeous, homemade pot au cream, a brilliant caramel cake with butter toffee ice cream. Fantastic, not to be missed, and a panna cotta done to perfection. Beautiful, now let's sit down and talk with Martin for a minute. Now tell me, where do you get your chanterelles? Well, Katie, that is a state secret. I know. Right? <laughs> I, I, I was afraid um, of that. I can't reveal that. But uh, I, I have a guy, he's a German guy that brings them into me. And he's I've absolutely... heard secrets from the street. I've heard those um, bits and pieces, but I won't reveal either. I'm sorry, guys. He, 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 he's, he's an expert in, in picking the, yeah. the chanterelle and knowing where they're going. Okay, so let me know this. Last night, oh, I know. I think I, think I know the secret. I won't share. Last night, the chanterelles were a little bit smaller yeah. than I've seen them in the past. Sometimes you get them and they're like, they're bigger. Yeah, yeah. And these were small and petite and tender. Now, is that something where you're picking up younger? Or is that a sign of like anything else in the seasonal or the, yeah, or the environment? Say, I'd say you're, you're on the border. It's, it's just a smaller, yeah, smaller like younger younger. Yeah, 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 they were so Give tender it. and Get so rich. Give it another week or two with weather like this because it's ideal weather for uh, growing for growing them. We've got a little bit of moisture in Ireland, uh, so that's <laughs> carbon, a little bit of heat. Yeah. So that's ideal. So another week or two, you'll see those big chantras. Beautiful as well. Beautiful. You know, so like the. And it was just a little right, bit of like butter, fresh herbs, and a little yeah, parmesan. Yeah, a little bit of parmesan. We, we just hit it with a little bit of. Um, Red wine vinegar at the end, a little bit of lemon juice, yeah, just brings out the, yeah, the, the flavor of the, oh. of the uh, it cuts into the richness. It does. The they were del delightful. Is it my understanding you have your own little garden? I do, pick? I do. I have a small little patch, very small, but um, I just brought in, let us say, actually, the, um, the uh, 
about ten minutes ago, so it's a pity you didn't see. But uh, it, it's in the kitchen there. But like, yeah, I have a small little patch. I grow a lot of herbs. I'm not a big grower, you know. Yeah, right. But I, I, like I have rhubarb. I have oh, all yeah, my herbs. Yeah. All our own flowers. Right. On <laughs> the tables. Um, we're half mad here. But um, and you know, a, a, a little bit of lettuce. Now I'm a great grower as well. Billy Clifford. Okay. Uh, you know, he. he between like all of us, yeah, 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 and he grows a little bit of lettuce or greens as well. You know, um, I have a nice variety of, of leaves, you know, so yeah. just mixed with nice mazuna and rocket and all that kind of thing. Oh, it was which beautiful adds flavor mixture. To the, yeah, yeah, they're fresh, you know, that's and they're baby. You know, they're, 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 yeah, they're, they're, they're baby. Yeah, yeah. That's and what I love. They're not micro. They're not. I, I no, right, micro, but they're, right. they're baby. Yeah, they're young enough, yeah, 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 beautiful. Yeah, and then of course decorating with the little flowers is such a touch of the season in Ireland. I just I adore that. Yeah, I think that is just treasured. We try to bring that back home yeah. and incorporate it because color in food yeah. brightens the eyes before you even yeah, put it yeah, in your yeah. mouth. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's a well. Like what, what we what I look. look Cooking can get a bit monotonous. Yeah. You know, and you do. The, there's certain jobs you do the same uh, thing no. day in day out. So you have to make it exciting. Yeah. And I I just love the idea that everything that's on that table, bar the first bring the, the crocker is edible. So yeah. whether it's the nasturtiums on the table, right. uh, to decorate the table, or whether it's the little bit of green on your yeah. bit of fish, it's all edible. And oh. just, that, that excites it, 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 it excites it us. Does. You know, it so does. And we need that. And, and oftentimes, like last night, we were eating like the little fennel that was there. <laughs> At the end of the evening, they get up off their table and they're walking up to the door and goes, that was magic. Or they give you the thumbs yeah. up or they say, thank you so much. And you don't even know these people. Right. That is fabulous. Hi. Okay, so last night we had tasting time at Packy's. And then earlier today, we met with Chef Martin Hennessy. And now it's time for Good to Great. And I bring you back to our house, to my kitchen here in Ireland, to share with you a couple of inspirations that I can bring and you can make for your friends. One of the dishes that's so traditional in Ireland is the lamb. And not everybody's gonna make lamb chops for their friends, so I wanted to give you an alternative. And this is perfect for a party. This is a lamb tenderloin on a potato scallion pancake topped with a couple of different varieties of yogurt, minted yogurt or apple yogurt, depending on your palate. And some of them have a little hot sauce. So what I've got here is different shapes. The potato scallion pancake can be cooked in a pan, into a pancake, then cut out into shapes. Depends on what size, if you're passing them to your guests or you're serving them on a plate. So I showed you some round, some square, a little rectangle for a bite size. Then the yogurt is a Greek yogurt with a little cucumber, Fresh mint, that's your base, okay? You can add a little lemon if you want, a little garlic if you want, jazz it up. If you want it a little sweeter, touch a honey, touch a roasted apple. Those are my suggestions for you. Then if you have a palate or a friend grouping that has a palate for a little bit of spicier food, I suggest either a tomato chili relish, which is spicy, a harissa, a puri puri. Also, if not, just the scallion and the fresh mint are perfect. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a bite of one of my favorites right here, right in front of me. This does have a puri puri on it. It's in the square shape and that lamb is put perfectly cooked and tender. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Delicious. This is a bite of Ireland on a plate. Mm. One of the most traditional items and meals that we think of when we think of Irish pub food is fish and chips. And last night when my son, my five-year-old son Charlie, ordered chicken gorgons at Martin's restaurant, a very formal restaurant, he was so kind and he served them in the most creative way. This is now our traditional fish and chips that we'd like to show. This is a cod because cod in Ireland comes straight from the ocean, so it's, it's so fresh and so brilliant. Oftentimes we think of cod as that frozen, flavorless fish, but here it's meaty and hearty. If you can't get it fresh, use a halibut or any other kind of fish that's kind of meaty like that, that you can get fresh. Once you panko fry it, that's the best way. Deep fried panko fry is crispy. 
The fries, I love the fries, and this will impress your friends. This is where the fun part comes in. Oftentimes you see newspaper rolled up, but actually I don't like the ink. So these are actual paper cones that are printed like newspaper, and you can find these. You can also find them just white if you need to, but this is kind of kitschy. So look around online, restaurant supply stores. It creates a dish that's so trendy for your friends. And if you want to jazz it up a notch, we have our traditional homemade tartar sauce. Little pickle, little pickled onion. If you want to do a little caper in there with a little homemade mayonnaise or just a great quality Hellman's or whatever you have, that's beautiful. Obviously lemon for fish. And then what I've got here is a variety of sauces, and this is fun. Ketchup for your fries, your chips, as they call them in Ireland. Then I have a Bloody Mary ketchup, which is so unique. Worcestershire, a little touch of vodka, but nothing too crazy. A little horseradish, all those fun ingredients of celery salt go into your basic ketchup base. So fun. Barbecue sauce is always a great option. I don't know, people aren't always expecting it, especially if you have one that you really like. And then for the fish, I love a sriracha mayo. It adds a little twist. So, this is crisp, fun, and delicious. Do you see that? I'm gonna choose the tartar sauce, traditional. Oh, delicious. Mmm, you can hear the crunch. Mmm, fabulous. Not to be missed. This is an award winner. Summertime is a time of the garden. Obviously our gardens are in full bloom. So whether you're in the country or you're living in the city and you have that little balcony garden, either way, or you visit a farmer's market, you're seeing so many fresh herbs and vegetables that you should work into your food right now. And here I am in this segment sharing with you one way of bringing that feel of farm to table into any environment, urban, suburban, a tight apartment, whatever it is. First of all, try and get some fresh flowers. I love the wildflowers that grow right now. It's gorgeous for a centerpiece. It can be rustic and disorganized as long as it has color. So work on that one as, as your first step. Second of all, what I'm presenting to you today is our good to great in the food. And you wanna serve your protein, which I'll be showing you later. It's going to be our hairy pig. But what I wanted to show you is a spread of family style sides. And this is how they do it in Ireland. And this is where your farm to table really comes in. So what's fresh right now? Let's start with bread. A French bread and brown bread is very traditional and they call it a brown soda bread in Ireland. But anything, if you bake bread, great. If you find it at the farmer's market and it inspires you, any kind of herbs worked into it, serve some bread even if you think your friends are low carb. Do it anyway. It's a fun, it's a fun aspect to the meal. Now, let's see what else we've got going on. This is an array of colors and vegetables straight from your garden. Okay, we're gonna start with a carrot and parsnip puree. Very traditional in Ireland. It's got a beautiful bite to it that's kind of um, earthy. That's what I'm gonna say about this. If you wanna add color, take some fresh herbs. I have coriander, which is also cilantro. Fresh peas with a sprig of fresh mint. Always fabulous for the, from the garden. Ties it right in, brings that brightness and freshness. Red cabbage. One thing that we don't always think about is kind of a pickled red cabbage. You take your red cabbage, saute it on, a down a little vinegar, a little olive oil. It's beautiful. You can add a little sugar if you like. So that's a fabulous ingredient. Herbed new potatoes in butter. I love to use tarragon. Use whatever appeals to you, but these are wonderful. Everybody loves these. Of course, everybody loves your mashed potatoes, a garlic creamy mash. Don't go slight on that cream. You add it. That's the best. And ironically, everybody here in Ireland, because it's potatoes and they have the best, French fries. This is truly the secret delight. Crispy, hot French fries. Enjoy! Okay, so my promise of another tip. Now this was an experiment even for me. I took the crispy skin that almost turns into like a rock hard candy surface, but it's not sweet, it's savory, on the pig as you roast it. 
So I always wondered, what do you do with this? So I stick it in the deep fryer, and voila, I get chicharrones. So this is a pork rind, an amazing pork rind. This is the before, this is the after. Listen. Mmm. The salty pepper, garlic salt seasoning that you put to roast your pig is sitting on this. It is the most flavorful. I know you're frying fat, so I don't recommend it for your daily diet, but this was a fun experiment. Welcome now to our hairy pig dinner. We are going to show a table and invite you into a really special time for our family. enjoyed our travels together through Kenmare. If you ever get a chance to visit Ireland, come to the West Coast and come to the town of Kenmare. It's brilliant. Until next time, this is Katie O'Reilly with Katie O's Food Carnival. <laughs>